million customer rides a year. By the end of this year, we'll be carrying 528 million rides, uh, riders. And by the end of next year, that number will have increased by a further 2.3% to 540 million rides. So in a way, it's a great thing. You know, the TTC is absolutely booming. But it's also, as any of you know, uh, creaking at the seams in that we are completely uh, at capacity on many of our services. So we've got to keep pace uh, with change. So um, there's four influences really on the budget. And let's tackle the budget straight away. It's a very timely matter because only yesterday uh, the Commission, the Board, uh, agreed our, um, our, our new budget, the budget going forward for 2014. And that was the operating budget, the capital budget, and the wheel turns budget. You know, and as, we, as you all know, that included a fair rise, which we didn't want to impose upon you, but we had to do that. There are four influences on our budget. The first is ridership, so uh, where customer numbers are increasing, and you can see from the graph that they are, we have to add service. It will be completely counterintuitive to save money by cutting service, so we're not going to do that. We are adding service. So we're adding uh, vehicles, operators, mechanics, Paying more, uh, spending more on hydro, spending more on uh, electricity and gas uh, in order to uh, keep your service moving. Ideally, we would have wanted to go beyond that and we would want to have added more service to get the crowding levels back to where they were. Uh, but the second uh, factor on, our, uh, on that equation, when we talk about ridership, then there's subsidy, there's uh, the cost of our operation, and there's fares. So let's just look at some of those factors then. The, uh, the, the, the TTC, in coping with, if you look at the bottom, or the, uh, one of the uh, numbers there, the, um, uh, where are we, passengers, 32% change. 32% change since 1992 uh, to 2014, we have carried 32% more customers. Over that same time, second uh, column there, or second row, we have increased our service by 26%. But at that, over that same time, we have only increased our workforce by 18%. So an increase in 18% of our workforce has delivered uh, a 29% increase in uh, service and a 32% increase in ridership. So, I, so by any measure, that is a huge increase in productivity, and rightly so, because what we've also been doing over the last year is uh, an all-out um, uh, effort to contain our costs. We have bent over backwards to contain our costs uh, internally so that we don't have to uh, impose fair rises on you. But the third element that I mentioned was that of subsidy. For the past two years, the TTC subsidy has been, ca has been capped at $411 million from the city. Now, these are tough times for the city. We, we understand that. Uh, the city has other pressures. So for two years, we have tightened our belts, we have cut our costs, uh, we have carried ever more riders so my argument would be that actually, if your subsidy is uh, frozen at a particular level, it's not a freeze, it's a cut. It's a cut in real terms. And we have had to make do with that level of subsidy. But uh, I was very clear in this, in this uh, financial round with the city manager, there was absolutely no way we could go a third year with a subsidy uh, freeze. So we argued long and hard for two things. Number one, that the subsidy had to be increased for operating and for capital. And number two, that if there were any gap, that the impact upon you, our customers, uh, should be limited at the very uh, maximum to the rate of inflation. I don't mind sharing with you, I was under pressure to reduce the amount of subsidy asked by imposing a 10 cent fair rise on customers. And I thought that was unreasonable, and I refused to do that. And the chair of the TTC have since refused to do that. So we limited the raise to five cents, uh, and we managed to squeeze an extra $27 million out of the uh, city manager again uh, in tough times. So this was a hard-won uh, hard subsidy increase, and we're now up to $428 million, which is a lot of money, but not really, not when you think and you look at these stats on what that lo what looks like by comparison with other major Canadian cities. There we are at the top, uh, 78 cents per ride. It's actually now 79 cents with the amount that we managed to squeeze out of the uh, city yesterday. But compare that, let's just pick a couple at random, compare that to uh, our probably closest comparator, $1.16 subsidy per ride in Montreal. And in places like Ottawa and Vancouver, $1.68. Closer to home, uh, you know, look at some of these other statistics. Brampton, $2.82. Durham Region, $3.46. 
and York region a whopping $4.49. The other factor in the equation is the province. The province used to fund us 50-50. Um, many years ago, or about 10 years ago, I think it has been, they stopped doing that. And yet we, uh, we know that GO, the provincial, uh, med the, the provincial agency of the provinces operating on GO, receives $1.28 per right. Now, how does that work out? So in addition to the uh, additional subsidy that we squeezed out of the city yesterday, we are going to be um, going to see the province, we're going to go to Ottawa, and we're going to be banging the table for fair and sustainable funding going forward. It has to be done. So there again, you can see that, that figure, the, um, the, the, the subsidy is frozen. So I won't dwell on that anymore, other than to say, my guarantee to you is we will continue to bang that table for extra funding. We will not cut service. In fact, we will add to service, and we will continue to manage the TTC effectively uh, within the money that is afforded to us. On to more positive things then, and I'm, I, I do then want to uh, hand over to Dan to, to give you the opportunity to speak. Um, in that, even within that tight operating environment, we will be making enhancements within this budget. So we are adding route supervisors. Why are we doing that? In order to tackle bunching and short-terming. We will complete the delivery of the rocket. As Chris said, the new streetcars will begin to roll out. Uh, and also articulated buses will begin uh, to appear, uh, beginning with Bathurst at the end of the year and then moving on to uh, Dufferin, uh, du uh, Dufferin in the uh, beginning of the new year. Dufferin station itself will be modernized and we're gonna continue that all out assault on cleanliness. Um, furthermore, the capital budget, we also managed to um, uh, 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 at least make the point that we have to get sustainable funding with the city. So that again will be the, uh, the topic of that task force. New subway lines are coming. The Scarborough subway uh, is planned. The uh, Toronto York Spadina subway is now uh, complete in terms of tunneling. So there is improvement on the way. Uh, we're gonna introduce new systems to manage our service. The new streetcars are bigger, so once they roll out, that will reduce crowding. We are making good progress on updating the signaling, automatic train control, on our busiest line, the YUS. With more buses uh, and reduced crowding, we get on, on, on more frequent service routes, we can begin to tackle the overcrowding that we know uh, is a factor, a very real issue for you. And there will be more stations with elevators, I'm very pleased to say that we did finally uh, get the elevators in uh, at Pape, and Pape Station will be finished by the end of this year. So we hope you have noticed some improvements in the past two years. Uh, the corporate plan that uh, Chris mentioned earlier is a document that I commend you to read. It is our roadmap for how we're gonna transform the TTC top to bottom, modernize it top to bottom over the next five years. We are quite convinced that we can deliver you our vision of a transit system that makes Toronto proud. Enough from us, let's hear from you. Thank you.